Welcome back to Your Average Investor, everybody. Today I'm going to show you a quick Think or Swim tutorial on how to set up your Think or Swim page to view different time frames based on the trading time frame you want to look at. So let's say that I want to trade the S&P 500, and so I'm going to go here to my Charts tab on Think or Swim, and then I'm going to type in the stock ticker I want, in this case SPY, and hit Enter. Typically, when you first open Thinkorswim, it will default to a view such as the 10-year, one-day view or something similar. But perhaps you're more interested in scalping or trading on maybe a shorter time frame like the one-hour or the 15-minute view. So all you're going to do is go up here to the top, click on where you see the D or sometimes depending on the time frame, it might say something else, but D for day. And you can have a list of favorites here. So you can see I've got this one day, one minute. If I click on this one, it's going to change the chart to show the one day, one minute chart. Now, the way to read this is this first one is how long the look back window is. And the second number is how much information is aggregated in each bar. So in this case, I've got a one day look back and each of these bars represents one minute of trading data on the S&P 500. So if I was uh, scalping some zero day to expiration option contracts, maybe I want to have the one minute chart up because that's going to give me the tightest price action for these scalping trades. Or perhaps I want to look at a longer time frame. So I'm going to go to this 10 year uh, W for a week. This shows me the last 10 years of the S&P 500. And each of these candles represents one week's worth of price action. Now, another thing, if you're new to Think or Swim, you'll notice that I zoom in and out. To do that, say I wanted to highlight this period here, I simply click and drag, and when I let go, it will zoom into that area. To zoom back out, you simply double click, and it will zoom back out to the full view. Uh, another thing that might happen, especially if you're looking at shorter time frames, is you may have uh, after hours information here, or maybe you don't have it. If you want to add or remove it, you go here to the settings cog, and then you go to equities, and there's a few different things you can do here. This first one, show extended hours trading session. If I click this and hit apply, you'll notice that now I get this nice area in between where it's highlighted a little lighter gray, and this is the after hours and pre-market trading for the S&P 500 for uh, the last you know, 24 hours. So this is at market close, and then after hours, and then you see this thicker dashed line here. That's the break from after hours trading to pre-market trading, and then pre-market trading, market opens, and then you see what happens since then. Sometimes this gives you a little more context, a little more information, especially if something happened, like for example, with uh, Micron overnight, they had earnings and they jumped pretty high on earnings. So if you don't have that context, and you're looking at this, uh, right, if I'm going to, again, I'm gonna go to settings, equities, and I'm going to uncheck that. I see this jump here and I don't know exactly what happened. Well, turning on the extended hours trading view can help me see that. Now, the other thing is some of you may not have the volume subgraph added. Sometimes when you open Think or Swim, the default is for the volume to be overlaid on the price action. To change that, same thing, you're going to go to equities, and then this box that says show volume subgraph, see if I turn that off, you see the volume disappears. So I'm gonna come back in here, go to equities, show volume subgraph, hit apply, and now I can see the volume underneath, and I can drag that up to make it a little bit larger. This is really nice, especially if you're trying to play some sort of like, uh, I don't know, scalping position, and you wanna see an increase in volume before you enter a trade. Uh, so let's see, let me turn off the extended hours here. And so now you can see, right, so I'm, I'm maybe thinking, okay, here's the big dip. There's a spike in volume. I want to enter a long position here. Watch it go up. You can see the same thing here. Big spike in volume, small uh, scalp there. Here's another spike in volume that did not result, result in a move up. So of course, you're just playing probabilities, but you can see the benefits of doing that. Now, if there's a time frame that you don't uh, see in the favorites, you can go over here and click on time frame and you can make uh, your own custom one. So I can say, hey, this is, I want this to be a, uh, let's go a, a 30 day and I want the aggregation period to be one hour and I'm gonna hit okay. 
Now this shows me the last 30 days of trading and each candle represents one hour time frame. So this gives me a little bit of a different view. I can add this to my favorites if I'd like. Uh, the other way to do it is instead of by time, you can do it by ticks. So you can say, hey, I wanna see every bar should represent you know, 100,000 ticks is the most or should represent one tick at the least. We'll just uh, put this at 1,000 ticks. So I wanna see the last five days, every bar is 1,000 ticks. Here we have the last five days, every bar equals 1,000 ticks. A tick is just basically a, um, an order that affects price movement. So there's a, a new way to look at the last five days of trading based on the ticks. And you'll notice when you do it this way, uh, some bars represent more or less trading time than other bars, right? So you can see here I go from 31 to 34. Look, look up here when I'm going here. So, right, so this is uh, 931, then we have 934, 936, 939, 942, 944. So you can see it's sometimes two minutes, sometimes three minutes. Just depends on how the tape was ticking at that moment. So that's another, uh, another option if you want to set it up that way. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the tick, but I know a lot of people like it. I like to just keep things simple and keep it on the time frame there. Um, and again, you can you can customize this really however you'd like. Uh, up to you, you can have an aggregation period of eight hours if you'd like, or six hours because that's uh, you know that's how you want to trade if you'd like. I know some people what they like is uh, instead of an hour, I think they change it if I remember correctly um, to a one hour. 15 minute window and the reason that they do that is because uh, on the hour 15 minute window that divides the trading day evenly since the since market open and market close right you, you t depending on where you live if you're east coast market opens at 9 30 market closes at 4 p.m so that gives you six and a half hours and so to put it into equal bars um you can do it that way if you'd like, right? So, uh, and you, you could do it here too. So we're gonna go to the one hour, uh, let's see, one hour, 15 minute. Let me just show you here again. And I wanna see 10 days with an aggregation of one hour, 15 minute. And you can see each day is now cleanly separated into five bars that are all exactly one hour and 15 minutes. So it's a kind of unique way to look at it. If you wanted to look at it that way, I've, I've uh, seen people trade very successfully off of this setup, but the important thing is is that you know how to switch your time frame so that you can get this to set up however you'd like it to set up, right? So here's my five minute chart. If I'm trading on the five minute chart, if I want to see a little bit longer of a time frame and see what's you know what's been happening on a long term time frame, I can do it that way as well. Hopefully if you guys found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, help us grow this thing. We'll catch you on the next video.